So a couple weeks ago, we were at the park for our friend Ryan's birthday and I was chasing after the ball and I sprained my ankle, the same foot that I broke a few years ago. So I was really bummed and I wasn't sure how long this injury was going to take to heal. But I couldn't walk for three days and at the time, I wanted to go thrifting for this video so badly but knew I shouldn't. So I thought, you know what, I should just check what thrifted items I have at home and that's when I found these two great dresses that I thrifted a couple years ago. I bought these dresses purposely for a mashup because the colors were so similar and I thought it would work well together but at the time I didn't have an idea for it yet. So if you're ever thrifting and you see something you like and you just don't know what to make from it yet, I say go ahead and get that item anyways because you never know two years later like me you might finally come up with an idea and this is actually one of my favorite transformations I've done so I hope you enjoy Enjoy and let's get started! Here are the two before dresses. The lace dress has some metallic silver in it so it shines and there's a waist tie in the back. The chiffon dress has a plunging neckline in the front and back and the skirt overlaps in the front. Before taking apart the dress, I'm going to sketch out my design. The sketchbook I'm using is from Fashionary and it makes it really fast and simple to draw out your design because they have the croaky lightly dotted out already. Just thought I'd share because last time I used it in a video and someone thought I was really fast and precise at drawing, but I'll link it below with the 10% off code for anyone interested. Eric and I were attending a wedding that weekend so I wanted to make something elegant to wear. Since my ankle is sprained on the left foot, the dress definitely had to be long enough to cover my foot brace or my shoes if I can't wear heels. And that means I can add an intentional slit on the other leg. So we'll do a right leg slit. And then for the bodice, I had to think about it for a minute. Since the lace dress will be used as the bodice, I checked out the pattern to make sure I could cut around the lace to create a nice border or use it as applique. Ultimately, I decided on a one shoulder asymmetrical neckline and want to also make the bottom of the bodice asymmetrical as well. Now that I sorta of have a game plan, I can now take apart both dresses. I need the skirt and lining from the chiffon dress. And for the lace dress, I wanna cut out the new bodice from the skirt. After cutting the lace skirt open so it can lay flat, I tested out cutting along the bottom until I figured out a pattern I wanted to follow and then officially cut the pattern above. Next, I draped the lace onto my dress form and started playing around with the design and fitting it on. Using my disappearing ink marker, I marked my design and marked where I wanted to cut the lace out. As you begin cutting your design out, make sure to leave plenty of room for adjustment later. To get rid of the darts, I'm just going to cut it open and overlap the lace. You won't even be able to tell after sewing it down. Next, you can either hand sew it down or take it off the dress form and sew it on the machine. I did both. Repeat the same process for the back side and make sure the back bodice lines up with the front bodice at the side seams and shoulder seam. I 
I accidentally cut too much off at the back, so I'm going to cut another piece of lace to fill in that spot. Now I can take the bodice off my dress form and secure the stitches even more on my machine. Moving on to the skirt, originally the dress had an overlapped skirt design in the front, so instead of overlapping it, I'm going to use the opening for the leg slit. Since my zipper will be on the right side seam, I opened up one of the side panels of the skirt to accommodate it. For the lining skirt, I fitted it on myself and made sure the same leg seam matched up with where my slit will be. Then I sewed the new side seam but left the top open for the zipper. Next, I trimmed the lining skirt short and then before I attach the two skirt layers together, I have to sew the chiffon leg slit closed up to where I want it and then gather the waist to fit the lining skirt. Here, I was just about to sew the two layers together but decided to make the lining skirt a little looser fitting. So to do that, I cut the back panel out and sewed in a bigger back panel. The lining skirt needs a slit as well, so I opened up the seam on the right leg and matched it up with the slit on the chiffon skirt. Now that everything fits the way I want it to, I can sew the two skirt layers together at the waist. I went ahead and sewed in the invisible zipper, which will only be in the skirt and not the bodice. Once the zipper is installed, I used the lining fabric from the lace dress to create some bias tape to cover the sides of the zipper so it looks more cleaned up on the inside. And also we'll be covering the waist of the skirt to hide the raw edges as well. Back to the bodice, I marked my waistline on the bodice so I know where the skirt needs to be sewn. For the right side of the bodice, I'm leaving it open and we'll figure out how to close it up at the end. And I actually haven't finalized the bodice yet, but now I can overlap the left side seam and sew it closed. I decided on a lace up for the right side of the bodice so I created some loops from the waist tie of the lace dress and we'll be sandwiching them in between the bias tape. To evenly sew the loops on, I used a masking tape method I shared in my 7 useful sewing hacks video which I'll link below for anyone interested. Once the loop strip is sewn together, I'm going to first sew the bodice to the skirt so I know where the loops should be placed. I lined up the waistband of the skirt along the line I marked on the bodice and pinned them together. Then to sew it down, I top stitch along the top and bottom of the bias tape waistband to secure the skirt to the bodice. Since it's going to be a lace-up design now, I trimmed even more of the lace bodice to accommodate it. Now I can sew the loops on the inside of the bodice.
Using the waist tie from the lace dress, I created a long skinny ribbon to lace up the dress. And the final touches, shortening the length of the skirt. Shout out to my husband for marking it for me. My foot did start getting better by the end of the week, so I felt comfortable enough to wear short heels to the wedding. I also had to hand sew the two leg slits together. And hand sewed the bottom of the lace bodice to the skirt so that it stays down. This was already the day of the wedding so I have a roller in my hair and in the car I finished the dress with a hook and eye above the zipper. And I'm finished. Here is the final transformation. I'm so crazy for wearing short heels still, but I felt a little more protected by wearing my ankle brace with them. As for the lace up on the side, you could either leave it out or tuck it in like me. Underneath, I'm just wearing my nude strapless bra, which blended in under the lace and surprisingly fit the shape of the bodice so it didn't stick out on the sides. I also wanted to say thank you to Daniel and Joa for including us on their special day and congratulations. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if this video helped you out, let me know down in the comments. Also, be sure to check out my website, coolerba.com for some blogs and my online shop where I'm going to be selling previous and future creations and secondhand clothes. And I'll see you next time. Bye.